overall politics tonight. Sarah Palin making big political news on two fronts. Palin has reportedly decided to skip the upcoming CPAC conference, which is a major event for conservatives, especially those seeking the White House. Mitt Romney, New Gingrich, Governor Bobby Jindal, and others have been invited to speak. Palin was asked to be a speaker, but turned it down. At the same time, Palin's agreed to be the paid keynote speaker at the first ever National Tea Party Convention. That's taking place next month in Nashville. She is a Apparently, uh, according to political uh, observers, sending a message to her party and her base, but those messages are being interpreted differently, of course, by different groups. With us now is Ron Paul, Republican congressman and former presidential candidate. Congressman, I appreciate you being with us. What, what do you make of, of Sarah you. Palin's decision to, to not go to CPAC, but instead to go to, to this first ever Tea Party convention? <laughs> I don't, I don't think I could make a whole lot out of it. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. I've been invited to CPAC. I'm, I'm going to attend that, uh, and I think that's a, a good function for a conservative Republican. But exactly what she's up to, uh, I don't know. And once you get paid for something, it's a little bit different. As a member of Congress, I don't get paid, so my, I make my decisions in a different manner. What, what do you make of, of the Tea Party? I mean, it, it's, it's clearly, I mean, in a very short amount of time, uh, you know, grown, gotten a lot of attention. What do you make of it as you observe it? Well, I think it's very interesting. I think it's very, very uh, important. I, I, I feel in many ways that our campaign in the presidential race was part of this because it was uh, more or less the first Tea Party. That was the day they raised so much money for me. And it looks like what has happened is a lot of people love the tool, the tool of the Tea Party. But I, think, I don't think it's a monolith in any way. I think there are a lot of different groups coming together trying to get out in front. They know there's a lot of people out there who want change and they want different government. They're angry at Republicans and Democrats, and then certain individuals are sort of trying to get out in front and, and lead this charge, but I don't think it, uh, it, it represents one single group of people. For instance, when I go to the college campuses, I'm looking for groups to come out, and I want to talk to them about personal liberty. I want to have them talk about sound monetary policy, and I emphasize foreign policy a whole lot. And some of these tea parties will uh, emphasize and talk about it, but some of them totally ignore it. Mm. And but but I'm more choosy about what I want to do because uh, the things that I've been talking about for 30 years and especially these last two years are important to me and and I believe sincerely they're important to the country so I'm going to keep pursuing those goals and they don't fit neatly into every package I mean everybody that attends a tea party isn't going to necessarily say oh I agree with everything that Ron Paul says and I think that might be true of Palin or anybody yeah. else and I think it's too early to sort all this out well I mean I thought one of the things I was so fascinated Fascinating and important about your race, uh, your running for the president was a lot. When you talked to your supporters, they were people who were maybe before Democrats or Independents or Republicans. It seemed to be a kind of a uh, you know you know kind of putting aside party, and it was really about ideas and, and specific issues. Um, and and there's, there's this energy, and I and I do get the same sense from talking to people you know who go to the Tea Party rallies that it's maybe people who haven't even been involved in politics in a very extensive way but who are mobilized in a way, do you think they can become a third party? I mean, there are those who are saying, you know, there's now those who are saying there are Tea Party candidates and, and, and they hope that, that it can become, you know, a viable third party. Do you, do you think that's possible? Well, it's always possible. It's not likely because of all the laws biased against third parties. But I think you're right. The people are coming in and joining, and they don't necessarily all have the same views. And uh, I think that's what's happening is being sorted out. I don't, I don't think you can have one party. But, you know, I've tried to promote the ideas of liberty as an independent uh, and libertarian. And it's very, very difficult because, you know, you don't get on the debates. You don't get coverage. Uh, you don't get on ballots. And uh, it's... We, we have a very biased system. We don't have a real democratic system because many of us have come to the conclusion, and this Tea Party movement would agree with me on this, that they don't get a fair shake with the two-party system, and they're tired of Republicans, and they're tired of Democrats, and therefore the two parties are the same. I've been complaining for all along. They really don't have a different foreign policy. I mean, how did the foreign policy change under Obama? We were supposed to see some changes. How does it change on personal liberties? No. I mean, we still have big government spying on Americans. Has monetary policy changed? I think we're making a little inroads there with my efforts on auditing the Fed. But basically, the leaders of both parties support the big issues. And I think the American people are catching.
attention on because they're facing a bankruptcy. They know the federal government can't deliver the goods anymore, and the people are getting worried. No matter where which uh, spectrum they're coming from, they know that the federal government is not able to deliver the goods anymore. Do you see anyone on the Republican side that excites you for 2012? And if not, or even if you do, are you planning to run again? Well, I think it's too early. I haven't said no, but I don't have any plans to do it. Uh, you, you know what kind of a job that is for somebody. I'm just going to take a year to time. I'm up for re-election, but I, I feel like I do the same thing steadily, constantly, over 30 years period, promoting one issue, personal liberty. And to me, that's what America was all about, and the Constitution, limited government, property rights. And that's where our prosperity comes from. So I think it's such a great philosophy. And there is such a need now uh, to go back to the, the beliefs that we once had. And that, to me, means you have to change foreign policy. And you have to change the concept of personal liberty and the free market. And that's what I work on. And I do it in the party and out of the party and education. But ultimately, I have a lot more respect for education than I do for the politicians. Politicians really don't change the world. I, it's only the ideas that change the world, and that's what I work in mostly. I've asked a lot of uh, potential candidates that question about whether they're going to run again, and they always have a cutesy answer. I think you had the most honest answer when you said, I haven't said no, and you're thinking about it, but you haven't made up your mind. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Congressman Paul, I appreciate you being on the program. Thank you. Th thank you. Good to be with you. All right. Monday, we're going to take a look inside the back.